Welcome back to They Did What, your source for the internet's craziest and most entertaining stories where I go over them, analyze them, and on occasion make fun of them. Today, I'm going to do an update or part two to the story I did yesterday titled, I'm sitting out in front of my wife's affair partner's house to confront him. And guys, as a quick, quick recap to the story that happened yesterday in case you missed it, or just a quick refresher, this is about a guy who was, he discovered that he, his wife, was having an affair and caught her on this and then played the role that a lot of guys do where they, she cried and said, I love you, I want this marriage to work, blah, 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 I'm going to go to therapy for you. Went along with it, did the therapy thing, bought her a whole song and dance, and then three months later he discovered, guess what, she's still seeing the dude, and not just talking to the dude and seeing the dude, still hooking up with the dude. And that's how he decided it's over. He went over to the affair partner's house and, and confronted him, and got him, and the guy literally sold her down the river in terms of what was going on. And they waited to their therapy, and then gave her the, the divorce papers, and said it's over. And they ended with him going to her parents the in-laws, and telling them exactly what's going on, looking them straight in the eye and saying, this is why we're getting divorced, she was having an affair, blah, 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 and everything ended cool. And now it picks up where he's going to talk to the guy that was doing his wife. He contacted his wife, and he's going to let her know what's going on and what happened, and you're going to see what, how that goes, and then also another confrontation with he has with his wife here. So this saga continues. It's interesting. It says here, I met and revealed all to my affair partner's wife. My soon-to-be ex-wife talked to her parents. There was a lot of screaming. God, I feel miserable right now. So shortly after I posted my last update, uh, my affair partner's wife showed up to our meeting place. I could tell she knew something was up as soon as I got out of the car. Well, obviously, if you're calling her up to meet you somewhere, she's going to wonder and think something's up. Come on here. She tried playing it off, friendly-like, but I could tell she knew something was up. I told her I have something I need to tell you. It's not going to be fun or easy to hear, and I'm sorry this has, is happening to you, to us. My wife and your husband have been having an affair. She started to sob immediately. I had to continue. He says, I found out about three months ago. At that, at that point, her head snapped up, and she had rage in her eyes. She said, three effing months ago? Why the eff are you just telling me now? Hey, this guy's going through a lot of crap too, you know, lady. You're lucky he's telling you at all. So I had to explain how I found out, what I did when I confronted my soon-to-be ex-wife, and how we were going through marriage counseling to save our marriage. She listened, nodding, until I got to the part where I found out that they were still seeing each other. She started to cry once again. He says, look, uh, look, I have to stop here for a second. I'm crying now as I write this. I feel, I feel awful just putting this out into the world, like I'm spreading someone else's misery around. She did nothing to deserve this. Truth be told, I feel absolutely horrible about telling her. She has a right to know. Of course it's not going to be easy. You know, in the old, uh, don't shoot the messenger. Well, she's shooting this guy as a messenger, but he had to tell her. He says she had no idea. She told me she was wondering why I called her, and she figured it was something bad about her husband. But what does that say about, obviously, her, the state of her marriage with her husband? She knows her husband's no good. Immediately. That's her first thought. What does that say? But she had no idea that the affair was going on that it was happening with my wife, that I had caught them, or that they had continued their relationship after being out, outed. Her entire world was just crushed. And then I asked if she wanted to see the video. I, have to, I had to laugh, actually. She thought I had a SCX video of the two of them, and at first was disgusted that I would ever offer to show her that. He says, no. No, I responded. I met with the affair partner yesterday and confronted him about all of this, and he admitted to it all. I have a video of our conversation. She thought about it for a moment and said that she wanted to see it. Yeah, that'd be a little awkward showing a video of the two getting it on. I had taken some time yesterday to edit the video down, since it was roughly 20 minutes of him hemming and hawing and lying and denying things. I had edited a few choice pieces into a roughly 60-second clip, which I played for her. In it, he apologizes to me, tells me that he effed up, and shares a few more details about their ongoing relationship. She started crying again as soon as I hit play, and she saw his face, and I stopped it and asked if she if she was sure. She was, and I let the video play out. I was starting when I first read this, guys. I thought she was gonna, oh, that's not him. That's not my husband. Never mind. No, it was him. At this point, there wasn't much more to say. I told her how sorry I was to be the person telling her. She thanked me for opening her eyes. 
I told her I knew exactly how she felt because I was feeling the same thing three months ago when I found out. And guys, as you remember from the last video, when, when this guy, he gave her that chance, which he shouldn't have, but he did. And then when I obviously found out the second time, that was it. He No, no ifs, ands, or buts. The marriage is over. And the therapy session, when he told his wife in front of the therapist, she was bawling her eyes out and crying. And I, I think she was getting on her hands and knees at some point, the whole theatrics. I told her if she needed to talk, if she needed to vent, if she wanted to scream obscenities, she could call me and I'd be there for her. She thanked me, we hugged, and left it at that. Well, would it be poetic if he had started hooking up with her? If she was good looking? That'd be poetic. Started nailing the dude that was hooking up with his wife, started nailing his wife. But that's what uh, a, certain, uh, a certain channel called uh, Something Hub, uh, you can Google. That th Those types of videos are on there. I honestly don't know what she's going to do now, but I'm sure it won't be good news for the affair partner. I truly feel I truly feel awful for her and for her children. I hopped in the car and headed home. My phone had been blowing up during our conversation. My soon-to-be ex-wife had been trying to reach me since I left her earlier today. I checked the security footage at home, and she hasn't been home yet, so I headed there. And by the way, in the previous video, he told her to get out. Go live with your parents, because I'm not going to have you here at my house. Now here's the part where he runs into her. When I got home, she was sitting in the driveway smoking. As soon as my, she saw my car, she started screaming, You told my effing parents, you low-life piece of crap. I hit record on my phone and stuck it in the front pocket of my shirt so I could get it all on video. Very smart, dude. I got out of the car, and in the driveway, she was blocking the garage and answered her. He said, Yes, I did. They deserved to know the truth about why we were divorcing. I didn't lie or make anything up. I told them I told them the truth, and I told them that they should love and support you through all of this. That took all the wind right out of her sails. She went from raised to being a bawling mess in seconds. She kept apologizing, asking what she could do to fix things, telling me she never wanted any of this, etc., etc., etc. What can she do to fix it? He gave her a second chance. And look what she did. She kept seeing the dude and hooking up with the dude. She didn't want any of this. Her, obviously, state of mind is in la-la land because she's the one that caused all this. I listened, and when she finally ran out of things to say, I responded, I told you everything I had to say at the therapist's office today. I have nothing more to say about this. I'll pick up the kids from school and feed them dinner. You're welcome to get some things, but you cannot stay here tonight. I suggest staying with your parents. At this point, she got angry again. You can't keep me from my children. No, I responded. I don't intend to keep you from our children. But given the state you're in right now, I don't think it would be a good idea for them to see you like this. I'll tell them that you want to stay with Graham and Gramps for a few days because Gramps has been sick and Graham needs some help around the house. They will understand that and they won't question it. But we need to decide how and when we are going to tell them about this. And it needs to be before the end of the week. Way to lay down the law. Good for this guy. I gotta wonder if this guy did more laying down of the law throughout their marriage if this would have happened. One has to wonder. She started sobbing again. My heart broke for her in that moment. Uh-oh. I saw the woman I loved, the woman I married, the woman I pledged to spend my life with, raw and emotional and lost and hopeless. I hugged her and told her I was sorry. Oh, shit. You should not have hugged her. You can feel those feelings deep down because, yeah, you're with her all that time. And you loved her and she's the mother of your kids, blah, blah, blah. But don't start getting weak. It's not going to go well. Well, look what happened last time you got weak and you gave her a second chance. She kept cheating with that dude. And don't go hug her. Remember, the waterworks can come like this. They're Jedi Masters at that, or, or well, Sith Lords. I hugged her and told her I was sorry that this was happening. What are you apologizing for? She did this. But that this was the result of her decisions. And that I would no longer stand by and be married to a woman who would treat me like this. Okay, you redeemed yourself. We stood there and embraced for a long time. Okay, now you screwed yourself again. Her crying into my shoulder in the driveway. Finally, she pulled away and tried to kiss me. Oh, shit. I pulled back and said, that's not going to happen. Okay, you redeemed yourself again. She broke down again. I turned and walked into the house. Thank the Lord you didn't walk in the house with her and start uh, getting romantic. I went into the kitchen and fixed myself a very stiff drink. Dude, I can imagine. After 20 minutes or so, I heard her come into the house. 
She quietly went to her bedroom and I could hear her packing a bag. I stayed in the kitchen and she found me there with her suitcase packed. I hope you're happy, she said. This is amazing, guys, that she's going from crying to yelling to crying to yelling. And now we're back to, I hope you're happy. Who caused this whole mess to begin with? Come on here, lady. I'm not happy at all, I responded. I didn't want this. I wanted you. I wanted us. I wanted a wife who would love me and treat me with kindness. And instead, I got this. So no, I'm not happy at all. Good response. She screamed at me. Then why are you doing this? Why are you throwing away everything we have? Who is the one that screwed the whole marriage up? He has every right. Obviously, she perceives this guy as weak. And she figures that she tries all these different manipulation tactics. From crying, to yelling, to guilt. That eventually she will find a way to get to break his armor. And get him to cave. And do the whole damn thing all over again. Look at all these tactics. Any of you guys have ever been through something like this, or an argument or fight, you've seen the many tactics they're taken. Don't fall for it. I'm not, I responded. You threw all this away when you went back to the affair partner. Now I'm just cleaning up the pieces. She screamed a few more choice obscenities at me, but I wouldn't ri rise to take her bait. When she realized I wasn't going to engage her, she left slamming the door so hard and knocked a picture frame off the wall in, in the back hallway. I heard her screech out of the driveway, and she left. Sounds like a six-year-old child throwing a tantrum at the toy store because they couldn't get that freaking toy they wanted. Stomping the feet, throwing a tantrum. She's got some nerve. I finished my drink and replayed the video of her screaming and cursing at me. If things got bad, I've got enough video evidence to keep myself protected legally. I picked up the kids after school and brought them home. I explained that mom is going to be staying at grandma and grandpa's for a few days. The kids were sad, but didn't ask any questions. We played, ate dinner, and they're getting ready for bed. And at that point, I'm sure this guy probably got himself another drink. I haven't heard from my soon-to-be ex-wife, a fair partner, or the fair partner's wife in several hours. The house is going to be very quiet once the kids go to bed. And frankly, I may sit here with my bottle and just pour myself a few more drinks before bed. Thanks for all the support. So that is the end of part two. And then tomorrow I will do the final of how this drama plays out here. But again, look how, look at all the, the roller coaster of emotion, of manipulation. The cry, It's all manipulation. The crying, the yelling, the guilt and all that, like I pointed out. These are the tactics that are used. And she's making him to be the bad guy here. This guy didn't do anything wrong. He gave her a second chance. A lot of guys would not do that. They'd say, we're done. Get out of here. I don't want to hear it. She got a second chance. And it was, you know, the guy obviously meant well. And he wanted to be the better man, the better person, the better husband, better father. And look what I got him. And I mean, and, and, and you can get, for those of you who are married... If you're with somebody a long time, it can be a roller coaster of emotions. Because it's like, oh, this is the mother of my kids, or this is the woman that I was once in love with, and blah, 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 blah. The roller coaster of emotions. But at the end of the day, there's no trust. And she did this. And even after a second chance, she did it again. I guarantee if he took her back, maybe, maybe there'd be a, a break in all this. But eventually, it would happen again. Watch a cheater always a cheater. A leopard does not change his spots. And unfortunately, she would see his kindness as weakness because that's what there are people out there that do that. It's, it's absurd. And you want to live in a world where you can treat your significant other, the one you love, with absolute kindness and love and respect and do all these nice things and blah, 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 and put them on a pedestal. And there's a puddle on, 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 the, on the street. You throw your freaking jacket on. They can walk over. But you do that crap. The kindness is mistaken for weakness. You're taking advantage of it. And there are some people in this world that will really do that. Perfect example here. Anyhow, guys, I've gone on long enough, so that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below what you think about this. Let me know what you think about him hugging her. I think that was not a good idea. And I will get to part part three tomorrow. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.